So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit different um, for my channel. I haven't done anything quite like this for a little while. Um, so I thought um, I would show, kind of give you a sense, I guess, of why I get so excited about the Wall of the Roses as a period and why I've become so truly addicted to it as a period. Thank you, Martin. Um, and um, sort of take you through a process where I'm going to paint up this group um, of figures um, to the sort of standard that I would do them for my armies. I mean, I get a lot of comments about, Christ, you paint quickly and, you know, your figures are done so quickly and what have you. And partly because I cheat um, and I thought it'd be interesting um, for some of you to see how I do it, um, what I do, the process I go through. Um, and um, also, I'm not going to claim to be the world's best painter, uh, certainly not, um, but what I also want to do is have a go at doing some liveried knights. Uh, and now I'm not going to go the whole hog that Martin or, or Ken has done um, with their uh, their work. I, the, I've said before, when I've showed off some of my work, it, it kind of ends up looking like a dinosaur or, 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 you know, I don't know, a big stringy bogey rather than actually what it's supposed to look like. Um, so for that very reason, I tend to go for lords that have uh, heraldry that's fairly simple to do. Um, these are, uh, I think, one, two, three. Uh, three of them are periplastics. Um, not entirely sure which set they are. They're all getting a bit interchangeable now. Um, and... Um, they're certainly the base of them would be the um, uh, medi. Actually, no, I think these are the um, captains that you get in the uh, Perry Knight sect, I think. Um, and this guy, I think, is from the um, uh, mercenary box. But all the limbs between the, the foot knights, the archers, the billmen, the mercenaries, cavalry are pretty much interchangeable with very minimal adaption. So I picked out this guy because he's got a nice tabard on. I haven't stuck his arms on, they're here. Same with this guy, he's got bare chest. And we're gonna leave, uh, try and do something with that. Good idea to do that, I didn't do it in my first few units. <laughs> and then try to get your paintbrush in amongst them is, is rather awkward. Uh, this guy is a metal perry. Uh, I think that he is part of, oops, Part of the standard bearer box set, you can get six or eight of them in a box, which are really useful because I want for my commands. I want to have. Uh, oops, sorry, showing it off the screen. For my commands, I want to have um, two standards. So I want to have the the Lord's personal standard, and then his Overlord standard. That's kind of my approach. Or if it is the main man, then it'll have his uh, livery and his retinue flag. So, enough kerfuffle. So what have I been doing? What have I chose? So uh, those who follow the channel will know I have been doing primarily the Stanleys. Um, Thomas Stanley, um, who um, was renowned for sitting on the fence. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, just I, I chose him because they actually fought on both sides and I thought that was useful. Um, and originally I was planning to do a Lancastrian army, mainly because Martin, seventh son, uh, was doing, a, has got a very large Yorkist army, and I thought it'd be fun to have something to fight him with. And then um, Ken, Miniature Wargames Warriors, started to do the period as well, and he chose Lancastrians. So I thought, well, if I go Stanley, they can fight either way. Um, and actually, that's perfect. And I've quite enjoyed reading up about them. So that's Stanley. Now, we had a game last night, um, um, Ken and I about um, fighting um, uh, I, I used my Stanleys I used Thomas and William Stanley um, I've got quite a lot of troops now in, in Thomas's retinue um, so much so it's probably too many for one commander so I wanted to do uh, so last night I had to use a, a stand-in I used Clifford um, but I thought well I'd like to do a secondary commander somebody just to take control of a battle a minor noble um, who would be in charge. Um, and 
so I, I started to look into it. Now, I, I don't claim to have uh, the sort of powers of research that um, Martin does, but um, I, so I picked up the, this freezy water flag um, as sort of guidance and then sort of did a bit of research around some of these lords. Now, I've used George Stanley, um, Lord Strange as one of my, um, in one of the pet, one of the retinue blocks already and I was drawn to these three and I'll be honest it's because they've got very simple livery um, these are Stanley Yorkist question mark Tudor from Towton Barnet Bosworth and Stokes Field so it covers quite a big period um, so I thought I'd do some research and they were kind of interesting Pilkerton's quite an interesting character um, his family were professional soldiers, uh, fought in the uh, French Wars. Um, but I actually sort of kind of got very interested in uh, this one, Sir Everard Digby, um, mainly because um, I just, when I started to, well, I said initially because the, 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 um, I wanted to have a blue livery, because I haven't got many of them in my army so far, and I thought even I couldn't have a go at doing those that um, fleur de lis type thing uh, on my troops. Um, so I want him to be a junior officer, sort of a, a sort of battle officer um, for the Stanleys. And what I've done is to do a little bit of digging on on Everard. Now, interesting enough, Everard himself, Sir Everard um, Digby. Um, was um, killed at Towton. Um, he's um, an interesting character. He was a member of parliament for Huntingdon um, and Rutland. Um, he was very much a Lancastrian. He fought at Wakefield and Towton, and then he was killed. Um, but he was, uh, along with four of his sons, um, which was not unusual in that battle. Um, Towton is renowned for being um, the most bloody battle on British soil, um, and the Lancastrians were soundly trounced, and large uh, swathes of the nobility who were Lancastrian were either uh, executed, killed in battle, or um, had to flee the country. Uh, it was a resounding Yorkist victory in the end. Um, but... Um, you know, despite Everard um, dying, um, he actually survived. His family continued quite successfully, um, and in fact, his son Everard Digby, <laughs> nothing but original, managed to um, lift the attainment on his lands, the sort of uh, uh, isolation on his lands, um, and um, he was granted his property back or his father's property back. Now, what I've been thinking about was actually doing Simon Digby, who is actually the second son of Everard, if you can keep up. So the one that died at Towton, um, he was the second son and he survived Towton um, and eventually was actually knighted by um, Edward IV, the victorious Yorkist king in 1477. So his father was an ardent Lancastrian, fought for the Lancastrians, was killed in battle, along with four of his brothers. But Simon was actually knighted by the Yorkist king. Um, but clearly he continued to hanker Lancastrian sympathies because eight years later, he fought alongside the Lancastrians at the Battle of Bosworth. Um, and for his services, he was given extensive lands in Rutlands. Um, and he also fought at the Battle of uh, Stoke Field in 1487, and he was given more lands in Lincolnshire for that. So I thought it was kind of interesting. The, the flags are unlikely to be that different, but I'm going to have him either as... He's just going to be Sir Digby. <laughs> um, so he could be Everard, because in the early part of the war, he would have fought as a Lancastrian. Um, he could be a later part where he would have fought... Um, it could be Simon in the later period. So I thought, well, you know, a bit of artistic license will go that route. Anyway, enough waffle. Um, what am I planning? Well, I'm planning one of my command bases, uh, which I use four figures for. So one of these will have Digby's uh, standard. One of these will have um, Stanley's standard because it's going to be sub-commander for Stanley. Um, 
this guy I think is going to be Digby, so I'm going to do his um, uh, tabard with the um, Digby crest on it. And this guy, I don't know, I might do the same. I might do the same, so you have his own sort of loyal retainer with him. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm not going to show every stage because that would be boring and I don't profess to be a painter, um, as I've said. But let's, um, I'll, I'll show you my first stages. Uh, well, I'll do some first stages and then I will report back. Okay, so um, let's talk through what I've done so far. Um, I've done the skin tone on all the figures where you can see flesh. Um, I've just used uh, a pale flesh, uh, this one rather worn out, it's a scale colour, pale flesh, almost almost out of that. Um, I've used Basilicum Grey contrast paint um, as a base colour for all the armour. So this guy's got a, um, yeah, sort of a breastplate really, it just, you can see the straps at the back. So I've just done that, a little bit messy, but we'll get there and tidy that up. This guy's just got leggings, uh, leg armor on and a helmet. Um, and the Lords I've done, um, just got in underneath just to you know, get all the, all the armor base colored. Um, this guy, now I think I've seen, I'm no expert on medieval armor. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they had armoured jaw areas on some of them. Or at least it would be a sort of coif type thing. So I've done that with him. But this guy, when I looked at the model, it seems like you can actually see his lips. So I've done that flesh. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, on the finish for model, it probably won't much difference. Um, I've used for the blue. I like this colour. This is uh, contrast to Talisar Blue. Uh, which I've used as the base colour on all the blue. Um, this guy I've just gone half and half on the helmet with blue. The Lord I've done full blue. Um, and then I've just used initial coat of just white on the uh, on the arms of that guy. And I used, um, this is uh, scale colour warfront uh, white, which I really like as a colour. Um, what else have we done? I've done this guy in Stanley's colours. Um, so I cheated a bit. I mean, when I do the normal Stanley colour, I mix up reds, a red, um, and make it sort of more orangey. Um, but since it's just one figure, I just use this uh, Gripto Hound orange contrast, which is, gives it a little bit too dark a colour for orange, but it'll do. Um, and then the green is um, Warp Lightning. Um, contrast paint so oh and the sleeves I just did a deck tan for this guy so there we are I'm going to try next to um, have a go at doing the uh, the Digby emblem wish me luck okay that's done um, I'm not going to win any painting competitions um, but by the time it's had a wash and uh, tidy up should be fine. I've done it on the shoulders as well and the backs of these two guys. I've also tried to do it on his helmet very, very poorly. Um, so I'm going to do the belts next um, and some of the scabbards I've already done, but I'll do the rest of them. So yeah, belts next, which I'll use. Uh, oh, where has it gone now? My, one of my favourite colours, this one. Uh, this is scale 75 of the the prints come off. I think it's called black brown or something like that. Really like it. Anyway, back in a mo. Okay, another update. Um, what have I done since last? I have done the belts as I suggested on the figures um, using that brown. I've um, done the skin tone. So what I do over the pale flesh, I use a contrast Gilliman's flesh. Um, you don't have to, you, so contrast paint can pull really easily, but actually on faces and hands, you kind of want it to. So um, that's what I've done with these, and I, I think the effect is pretty good. Um, 
I've done the uh, the poles of the standards just in black. I've debated what color to do them in my head, but that's what I went for on the end. And then I've um, sort of heavy brushed, heavy dry brushed, um, a sort of silver over the armor places on the models um, just to pull them out. Um, obviously, I've also stuck the arms on. Um, and I think that's all I've done since I last showed so I'm going to let this dry thoroughly um, and then we're going to put a wash over the top of it back in a bit so uh, I forgot to do the um, uh, hilts on the blades I've done that subsequently so I've got here on a very cheap old brush um, some very watered down null oil and I'm just gonna whack that all over these figures um, if I was a good painter, I'd use different versions of the different, you know, things like flesh color and whatnot, but I can't be asked with that, frankly. And this is about getting troops on the table quickly that look good from three foot. That's always my assumption. So we'll just do this. Hopefully the watered down non oil will leave enough of the attempt at heraldry that I've done. And we should still have plenty showing through. I don't usually have gold fingernails, just only on a Friday. Right then, finish this off. I'll let them dry. And then I'm going to stick them down. Actually, no, no, I'm not to tell a lie, Dom. Uh, I'm going to let it dry thoroughly. And then we'll do a little bit of highlight work, not much, but a bit. And we'll do some um, dry brushing. And then we'll put them on some bases or a base. I'm going to have all three or four of them even on one base. So back in a minute. Right, that's all dried, and I think they're actually looking pretty good already, to be fair. A um, little bit of touch-up work needs to be done around the sleeve there, um, also on the side there. Um, but actually coming out quite well so far. So what I'm going to do now is do a little bit of the highlights on the blue. I'm going to use this uh, Vallejo Medium Blue, just do a little bit of highlighting work. Um, I'll use a bit of extra white on the white, or white, and um, brown, and actually I'll, I'll probably have to mix something. I might, might just use red, actually, for the uh, highlights on the orangey red. Um, anyway, do a bit of that, and be back. Bosh. Right, the highlights are done. Um, and I think these are pretty much... Pretty good actually, I'm quite pleased with how they've come out. Uh, just seeing there's a little bit needs to... Um, I'm actually quite pleased with how this has come out. I think it's... Uh, they've come out pretty good. So, um, what I'm going to do next, let that dry and I'm going to stick them down to their bases now. I talked about this in my army showcase. Um, I decided to put my command groups for the infantry commands on, on the regular foot bases. So these are 60 by 45s. Um, just because when they do join a unit, I think it looks better. The only downside of that is they don't stand out quite as well. Um, you pay your money, you take your choice, right? Um, but I'm gonna continue because I've been using these bases all the way through. So I will stick these down. Oh, I know what I've forgotten to do. I've just realised I haven't done um, the flesh tone. I need to give the flesh a bit of a highlight. Um, so I shall do that. So let me find my flesh tone. I've just got a usual medium flesh tone from Vallejo. And I'm just going to just touch up um, what I should have done, which is just to do just the bits like the chin, like that and the nose and the chin on that fella and then his knuckles so I'll do that I'll stick these down and I'll show you what it looks like right then uh, they're all stuck down um, 
and in position on the base. Um, I'm going to do a little dry brush using some um, AK um, deck tan. Uh, this is uh, just I would normally do it on the on the painting um, thing that I'd already you know on the on the the stick that I paint on. But just really for ease of doing this video, I took it off, and also because I knew I was going to have plenty of room uh, to get in there and uh, and get to the bits I need to do. I mean, the good thing about it, if you put a bit too much on, you just put a little bit of moisture on your finger. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Doorbell went just as I was doing that. So um, what I was saying was, if you put on too much. Like I did there, just wet your finger and drag it off. So uh, yeah, so I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the postman. I would normally do this on the uh, painting stick, but I'm just doing it this way just for speed because the video I've only got so long before. I lose control of the ta of the table. <laughs> so there you go. That's done. Doesn't have to be much. It just takes the. Yeah, I like I like dry brushing my figures at the end, just because to me it just takes a little bit of the shine off and puts a little bit of an edge on on the edges of things. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's that done. So next up, um, I'm going to just use a trusty. A Vallejo thick mud European mud and I'm going to use a blunt knife and just smear it all over the base and then I'm going to stick tufts into it while it's still wet back in a bit okay so that is done and there's the lovely stuff itself um, I love this for for the effect I'm trying to get on my armies which is troops slugging through the mud um, this is perfect um, I'm going to just show you how I do this with the oops, tufts. This is a particularly big tuft. And the beauty of this stuff, while it's still wet, is it dries in situ and you can just sort of work some of the mud up around it just to sort of make it look a bit wet and yucky. Um, so I'll just put a couple of these on. Oops, a couple of the bigger ones. There's another one there. Use your finger if you want to. And let's have one of these flat. Oops, two of them. There we go. It's all still wet. And I'm going to put a lot of other smaller ones around. And I'll show you what it looks like after that. And there we have him. Um, all I've done is uh, give him a quick spray varnish. Uh, a little bit shiny on the video, but hopefully won't be once it's settled down. Uh, I've attached the standards. So I do one thing to say, I always spray varnish after I've uh, put the basing on. I just find, uh, not so much with these sort of tufts, but with other tufts and what have you, it just helps to settle it and and glue it down. Uh, for this stuff, because this mud is actually paint, um, I think it also just helps to put a coat on that as well. Anyway, whatever, that's my way of doing it. Um, flags are on, but they need a little bit of touching up. No matter how you cut them and just get them, you think they're absolutely perfectly lined up, then when you get them off there, a little white line around the outside of that blue flag so I'll just get some uh, matching blue paint and touch those up and some orange and green on those ones um, and just finish that off and then I will show you a close-up on the spinny wheel of what Digby's command group looks like after that and I should have done the timer on it painting timer because um, it really didn't take very long at all um, a little bit of wash, a little bit of uh, highlights, and a little bit of uh, dry brushing. Um, simple, really. And that's how I get figures on the table very, very rapidly. Um, and I feel very... <laughs> I feel not very, but I feel a little bit like I'm cheating. 
given the fact everybody else puts in so much effort around their figures. But um, admittedly, they do look a hell of a lot better than mine, but mine are, mine are perfectly okay. So as I say, I'll let this, uh, I'll finish off the flags, just tidy them up. I may also use some of the Vallejo static water uh, in those gaps around there just because I think for me the effect I'm trying to get is this muddy field so could a couple of puddles around the place is always going to be good and um, I'll show you what the final product looks like so anyway thank you for watching um, thanks for those who've subscribed thanks for those uh, who just watch um, if you can just hit that subscribe button that'd be fantastic um, but let me know in the comments down below um, you know does this, is this the way sort of method you use? Um, is this too simple for your liking? I don't mind. I mean, whenever you do a painting video, get dislikes. And I always assume that's partly because people just don't like the approach you're doing. Um, and that's fine. Um, but I'd rather they did that and just said why they didn't like it um, or what they would rather do. Because um, I know everybody has their own roots. And uh, for some people, this is far too simple. For others, though, hopefully it helps a little bit. Um, gets my troops on the table, and that's what I'm all about. Figures on table to play games with. Anyway, picture's coming, but stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Thank you.